The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Hallie Elise Show, featuring your host, empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. She is an author, psychic, and media personality, and has been listed as one of the top 100 psychics in America. Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise shares the spiritual, metaphysical, holistic, and magical powers of the universe. Follow Hallie on her website at HallieElise.com, and all her shows can be seen via live stream video. Now, here's your host, Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you again. I'm so glad to be here tonight. As always, when I have a guest, I'm very excited for this evening, and I have an extra special guest for you. I have Jacqueline Ripstein here with me, and for those of you who know her, know she has this amazing transformational art where you look at her artwork, and there is one image and one feeling, one sensation, and then you put a black light on it, and all of a sudden the image changes. And then you put the black light as well as the regular lighting on it and you have a third image. Now all of this is gonna make sense to you in just a moment, but I wanna share that Jacqueline is not just an artist. She is internationally renowned for her artwork. She has recently introduced to the world a fabulous book called The Art of Healing Art. And its purpose really is to give you the keys for your own power and awareness. And what's really amazing is you're, you begin to deal with a higher vibration. You begin to understand your life better. You begin to go way beyond what is normally expected with a self-help book but I'm getting ahead of myself so without further ado I'm gonna just say that Jacqueline has been doing art since she was 12 and actually when I believe it was let me see her I cheated tonight because um, I wanted to make sure I had everything down that I could possibly have down and I have so many notes aha found it <laughs> um, Jacqueline won an award with the Prism, uh, Prismacolor at age 12 so that kind of gives you an idea that she's been touching into something special at since early and what I think is really fascinating is those who are if you will touched by intuition touched by that guiding force that higher power and art is a part of that tend to receive that early on so again without any more talk on my side for a moment I'd like to introduce you to Jacqueline hi I'm so glad that you're here with us how are you Elise it's wonderful to be here with you and thank you for allowing me to be here with you my pleasure. You know, um, there, there's, again, so much that I want to ask you, and it's funny because I had written down all sorts of things, and of course, sitting here, I'm squinting, um, don't have glasses on or, or the contacts, and I wrote really big, but that's okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that you created an invisible art, and you literally are, are the first person to come and, and do this type of thing. It's never been sim seen before. It's patented. Um, people see this and they're taken aback, but even more astounding is that scientists have found that there literally is a frequency and a vibration that is not seen but perceived by the person who views your art. Can you share with us a little bit about where this impetus came from to create this type of unusual art? With pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just happened, you know, through my career that I was not satisfied with the typical techniques, even though I'm self-taught, I never went to art school. So I used to say, God, please, please let me show people your light. Let me show the divine light within each human being. And that was 1983 when I started on the quest. And eventually, those three years that I went on the quest for the invisibility, imagine you're talking 1983, when science had not even tapped yet into invisibility. Right. And the word vibrations and frequency was like, are you crazy? <laughs> well, that reminds <laughs> you of the 60s, you know, like, what's your sign? <laughs> you know, there's that, okay, this is somebody kooky, what, is, yeah. what are they looking for? Yeah, are you crazy or... You know, are you going to be like the emperor going out to the street? People would literally <laughs> laugh at me. Really, they would say, what are you talking about? You know, are you crazy, really? Or, right. or what is it? 
and inside of me there was a stronger force that I could even uh, know about. It was just pushing me and pushing me, going a step further and trying to look for that light of God. And as you said, this had never ever been done in the art world. Right. Because we have been very limited in in a canvas. But then as I started getting more into invisibility, I understood that a canvas is a life matter. All the yes. atoms are moving yes. and they're vibrating. And then they're vibrating also through the colors. Then you're adding an extra Absolutely. vibration. And then they're vibrating because of the person who is emitting and doing the art itself. Now, it doesn't have to ha to be a higher vibration. Somebody that's doing a painting from pain, that painting will be inputted with very low vibrations. So you need to be very careful what right. you put in your house. Well, that makes a lot of sense because of the fact that we talk about, um, for instance, doing any sort of ceremony or doing anything sacred, that you should always do it when you are in alignment, when you're feeling yes. harmonious, when um, your, your internal energy, your physical energy is up to par, but also that emotional energy is there because it does make a difference. In, my, my students and a lot of the folks that listen in to the show know that I'm constantly talking about everything is energy. You know, whether you're looking at um, the microphone here or the person across the room, there is a component of energy. And when you were saying about matter is moving, absolutely, because when we go down to our barest source, what are we? We are energy. But usually we don't think about a painting as matter is moving. True, very true. You or know, the, or we the think table. It's there right. in the wall and it's just decorating yes and I really got angry a few years ago because I said to people art is not to decorate a sofa or to <laughs> match a sofa which I is what it. they have done with mm -hmm. art it's a way of prostituting the real true art art is here the true art is here to nourish the soul of people that okay. you can have a piece and that piece is giving you the hope the faith, the inspiration that you need to start a day. But again, people have to be very careful in what they're hanging in their home. Of course. Because they're ha if they're hanging something that comes from low emotions, that's what they're going to wake up to. Absolutely. That's the day they will manifest. If that's the first thing I see when I wake up, without knowing my mind is registering those vibrations, not only the shape in the image that's there, but the vibrations inputted by the artist are going to be, you know, transmitted as well. Right. So you're basically transmitting and also transmuting that hidden language of the universe. And it's interesting because you talk about the invisible but, and the light. And most people don't see that every day we experience it. Every day when you look at a person and you, you see them glowing or you see them sad. And it's not because they've said something, but you sense it, that you're tapping into that. Why do you feel it's so important for healing that we have this type of art, that we have, if you will, your gift being shared? How does it make a difference? I love the question. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I love that question? Because when you see a piece of art a few years ago you were in a show I had mm -hmm. and you saw the reaction of people towards my art what can happen in a second of art and in this case of invisibility you know it can be a moment of inspiration that can trigger your life and change it to 360 degrees totally a lot of times when I have a show I have men and women crying and they don't know why and I always say to them you're not crying of pain you're crying of recognition because the my art is uniting your soul and it's really not about my art I'm just the instrument of God right and what really happens is a person that sees the art in that moment they're doing an image a mirror of, of their own soul and that's the purpose of the book as well. The purpose of the book, if, when you were reading it, I'm sure you were saying to yourself, you were hearing, I know this, I know this. <laughs> the whole idea is that 
from the beginning to the end, there's two ways to read it, from the beginning to the end, as you're recognizing things, it is not you. The one that's recognizing the knowledge is your soul, because you know it. Right, that higher part of yourself. So it's uniting you with your soul. It's opening the portal of visible and invisible. Beautiful. So you be, you're, it's an alive book, what I call an alive book. The other way to read it is you just open it. Open yes. it. Yes, and it, you know it's interesting that you bring that up. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that since I was a kid with books that feel right, meaning I wouldn't necessarily open um, a Dickens book and just open it up. But any book that has a certain feeling to me when I hold it, I'll take a moment and, and ask. I'll close my eyes and say, okay, what is it I need to see in this moment? And I open it up. And I was playing with your book. i got to tell you, <laughs> I do yeah, this a kidding. lot. I'm like, oh, that's perfect for today. Oh, look, that's perfect for this the moment. <laughs> a ball I really was but it's great because as you said you could read it and you have lessons and and this is what I think is real important for people to understand that when they're reading your book it is not as if it's a challenge it's not a hard read it's not above their head everything clicks and there's a fluidity to it and whether they go from chapter to chapter and actually do the homework you know you have that little space there for notes which I love too because how many of us write in the margins and highlight you actually give a place for it which is wonderful but how many of us take notes because in that moment it makes sense and we want to remember it and it's so easy to do with this type of book because again you connect um, you have in one section where you say I am that I am now most people are familiar with that they've heard it at some point but don't always connect with it and I feel that when the person gets to that chapter and they read that they are going to understand what it means mm -hmm. now as far as the art itself because obviously within the book you have the art in black and white versus color well, so I have the color book as well. And you have the color, book. Oh, color okay. book. Okay, I think my version here is black yeah. and white. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because this is a very limited edition. Gotcha. But, okay, so let's say the person is holding your book and they have the black and white edition. Is there going to be a difference with the color vibration? Because each color has a specific frequency. Each color, you know, and we know we see this all the time now in jails, for instance. They're going with pale pink instead of gray because it makes a difference on, on keeping their, um, their vibration inmates, their you know, lower as far as mood and whatnot. So if they're tapping into, if you will, that expanded consciousness, they're tapping into that universal knowledge, they're tapping into their own self-awareness. All of these things are, poten are potentially there for them to open up to. Is there some sort of shift or distinction if they're seeing it in black and white versus color? There is, definitely there is. When you're reading the book, even you know if it, if it would be the, uh, the e-book, which is in color as mm -hmm. well, when you're reading the book in color, it's stimulating directly your right brain. So you don't have to digest. Knowledge goes directly through your right brain to your spirit. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. When you're reading the book with a black and white, it goes to your left brain. It has to be uh, really digested, and then it, it goes to the right brain. Right. And there's a difference. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense because, uh, again, you know, I, I will say that I mirror you in respect to mm -hmm. communication when it comes to left hemisphere, right hemisphere. One being analytical, one being more artistic, one connecting, you know, automatically with that intuitive knowing, and one taking a little time to go beyond the linear and allowing it to absorb. To so that's why I wanted it. to know. So I would suggest if you folks are planning on getting the book, if you can, get color, just because you could speed up the process, or get it online and get the physical book because this way you can connect with the color as well as hold the book in your hands now what I think is incredible here is that obviously something special must take place within you when you are in the creative process what is that how does that happen and really what is that inspiration because you figure you don't just wake up and go okay I'm doing a perfect piece of art it's a whole retreat. Let me just t uh, tell people so they know. Sure. In Amazon, which is where they can purchase the book, or right. in my website. Or the, the art, art of healing art. Art. Com. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And uh, that's where they will find the, you know, four formats of it the black and white, okay. the color, and the. Uh, 
and the ebook and the audiobook. Oh, you have audio also. I yeah. didn't even realize. Yeah, Wonderful. yeah, it's in Amazon. But they have to look for the art of healing art, one word healing art. Okay. And, the, and it'll come that's up. The, yeah, or okay, or name. they can type in Jacqueline my name, Ripstein. Ripstein. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it is an amazing process. First of all, I never paint if I don't put a candle and dedicate my brush to God. So that's the beginning okay. of my whole thing. Um, ideas sometimes go, come through inspiration, theater, talking to like-minded people like you. You know, I never know when I'm getting a moment of inspiration. What I can tell you is, once I prepare the canvas, once I prepare my material, I take the brush, my eyes start flickering, and I don't know where I go. I'm out. And I can be out of my body for even 12 hours, which happened to me when I was commissioned to do the Virgin Mary for Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. I painted 12 hours straight without knowing I was 12 wow. hours in. Wow, talk about really connected. Yeah. You know, we do that sometimes when we are cooking or we're taking a walk or we're watching film. We get or so dancing. engrossed or, dan or dancing. Oh, absolutely. Anything Any to do creative. with music. Yes, anything creative where we can be so engrossed that we have no clue as to what time it is. Yeah. So I'm curious because you're dealing with um, a higher vibration. You know, the whole purpose of the book is to heal, to enlighten. It acts as a doorway to awareness. Um, obviously, it shares your beautiful art. It makes an impact. But what was the impetus to write the book? Because here you are an artist, and you get lost, as we were just saying, in the art. And, you know, you go through that whole process. And it's it's like a, if you will, uh, to me, a, a sacred ceremony that you dedicate yourself to on a consistent basis. So why a book? Uh, it's a wonderful question <laughs> again. Um, out of the blue, in 2005, I got sick. I could barely talk. I could not function but one hour per day. Wow. And they eventually they thought that I had a brain tumor. I went to University of Miami, Mayo Clinic, and they all thought that I was coming in with a, a big uh, tumor, brain tumor. And eventually, when they did the scan, the MRI, the doctors and the clinologists were very shocked because what they thought was a brain tumor, big, was a huge pineal gland. Wow. Now, as an artist, I use a pineal gland. Right. Anytime the, you do anything creative, intuitively, that's a absolutely, eye. third eye. So, I use my invisibility more than I use my visibility. I love it. Because I'm hours and hours doing the art. Right. But physically, something affected me that I couldn't talk. Day by day, I was talking less and less and less. I could not perform. I could only be aware, not aware, function. My energy was only one hour per day. So you were still thinking and functioning, but you couldn't verbalize. And my head was going speed, you know, that my body could not catch to the vibration of my, my mind, my brain. So at the beginning, like we all do, I started fighting sickness, and it became worse and worse and worse. And then I just gave up. I gave it to God. I said, okay, God, I'm giving it to you. You know, you're the one who will guide me. Right. And this is yours. The moment I gave it up, I started giving exercises that sometimes in workshops I give which is based in Leonardo da Vinci, creativity to awaken and contact your inner child. I started connecting to my inner child. I saw that I had abandoned myself. That's and interesting. That's when the whole book started being dictated to me. Wow. It took me three years to finish it. It's amazing. So during that three-year process when you were basically the receiver of dictation <laughs> and then just See. transcribing. So you're <laughs> you know. I used to say, not so quick, please. It's amazing. What else took place? Did you find that all of a sudden your head felt lighter, that you felt better? Because th this is not the first time that I've heard this, where someone all, went, all of a sudden is taken over by something, and it is not until they've birthed something new 
that the discomfort goes away? Well, there's two things. Physically, I had to go to a clinic in Tijuana with an American doctor that eventually found out that I had no immune system. He said to me, you can die tomorrow. You have no protection. Your body is off, which I'm surprised that the big, you know, hospitals did not right. see that. That's from the physical point of view. Of view. From destiny, like it happens to artists, I think I was pushed into it, forced to quiet, to close my, my, my mouth, and to listen. Makes a lot of sense, absolutely, because so much healing comes from no, going within. No, but you said it was the dictation. Right, right. Well, I would think, too, allowing yourself to just listen and put that information down that in itself raised your own frequency. And the, the illness, perhaps, was a, a way of your body catching up to what was taking place energetically. You talk about high frequency, um, like a, vib a very high vibrational frequency in respect to your art and your book. What are the benefits to that, to the average person who, let's say, you know, they just, um, they're a mom or a dad or what have you, and they go to work and they hang out and, you know, they're not doing anything um, unusual other than enjoying their family or their work. How does it benefit somebody like that versus somebody who is in the art world or who is a healer or, you know, is specifically looking to raise that vibration? Well, it does affect it starts by knowing that we are energy human beings, are energetic beings in reality. And I always say to people, from 24 hours, how many do you think we are living in the invisible world? So if you think about it, the invisibility of the thoughts, the thoughts are invisible, the feelings are invisible, so we, when you're sleeping, you're in the invisible. So in reality, we are living 24-24 in an invisible world. And that's one of my things that through my art and my mission is to show people that if you really want to manifest the life of your life that, that you desire, you need to understand you're not manifesting it from the visible. You are manifesting it from the invisible. You're creating it from the invisible. Okay. That reminds me of thinking in terms of within chaos we create. Meaning that there is nothing, if you will, concrete or um, settled. So it's unseen. It's invisible in that time. And so we are able to, I guess, get pushed to the point of having to create, to needing to create. Now, you are also a peace envoy um, with the UN, and you've been uh, invited all over the world to share your mission, to share your proposal. Can you tell us briefly about some of the countries that you've been to? Well, let me tell you the proposal. Okay. My proposal has been to use the arts and creativity as an instrument for world peace. Why? And what am I based on? Einstein used to say, if you're trying to solve a problem from the level it was created, you will not solve it. You need to go right. an octave up. Right. Now, octave, in the vibration of a human being, it means that you need to raise yourself into a creative mode. That's the octave. When we're doing art, when we're performing, when we're singing, when we're dancing, it doesn't matter that we're not professional. When we're doing something that's born from the soul, manifesting Joyful. it, and I got chills saying that. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, you're in that octave that's above the physical realm. That's what the crit creativity, creative forces are. That's what you call inspiration, to be in spirit inspired. Yes. Perfect. It's a moment when we're born, we inspire, which means we have to understand that to live life with inspiration, to take every breath that we take, that's going to take us to be who we truly are as divine beings of light. Beautiful. And I know you make reference in your book in several places to stop, take a breath, 
breathe. Yes. And again, I, I do that with my clients a lot of times. You know, they come in and they're out of sorts, and not because they're having difficulty breathing, but they're just out of sorts. So you say, stop, breathe. And I always talk to them about it connects us with our source, with the divine. Yes. Believe it or not, time has flown by. I know you went to China as one of the countries. So India. India. And Italy. Uh, I know that you continue to do this work. I want to share with everybody the art of healing art.com is where you can find the book. You can take a look on Amazon. And believe it or not, our time is over. Jacqueline, thank you so much for and being the books here. And books. I'm having a show. Oh, yes, October 22nd. Okay, check with me if you didn't catch that real quick. Books and Books is having a special event for Jacqueline, October 22nd. I'll get you all of the information. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next week. Good night. Be enchanted and delighted. Connect each week here on WNN for the Hallie Elise Show. Also on Facebook and at HallieElise.com. Thanks for tuning in. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.